Hi guys, okay, so I'm here at the German School London in Richmond and I've been here all week doing the music theatre project Twilight of the Beggars with them and uh, I want to tell you in this vlog a bit about it. It's been so busy this week that I haven't had a chance really to do very much vlogging but I'm going to tell you now how it works and the story of this project kind of starts with the house that I'm about to go into which is where amazingly I'm staying as well. They got a little flat up there which I've been staying in all week. This house is called Douglas House. Uh, get some nice shots of it for you as well. Douglas House, uh, 18th century building. Uh, the reason it's relevant to the project and to music history is because, as I said in a previous video, I can link the video, uh, this is where The Beggar's Opera was written. Beggar's Opera is an incredibly important piece of music history. Uh, it is the first musical, really, uh, and apparently it was written here, as far as we understand. So the concept for the music theatre piece for the school, when we started talking about doing a project together, was that I would do a reworking of the Beggar's Opera. Uh, there's a tradition of doing reworkings of the Beggar's Opera. You may know the Troppany Opera by Kurt Weill and Bertolt Brecht, that's one. There are various other ones as well, that's the most famous one. Um, and the idea is quite dark in here, so uh, bear with me but i um, take you up to the flat and I'll tell you a bit more there. Just as Bertolt Brecht had the idea when he did his Beggar's Opera reworking that it would be for kind of non-professionals. Um, so you have this idea of using theatre actors rather than trained professional opera singers to make a kind of anti-opera. Uh, one of the concepts here was to take that further and make a piece which would be performable by young people, so definitely not professionals, uh, although in fact they acquitted themselves incredibly well. So yeah, this is the beautiful flat in Douglas House that I've been staying in. I'm hugely grateful to the German School London for this incredible experience of not only being commissioned to write this piece, but just seeing the whole school get fired up about the project. I'm going to tell you more now in this video how it works and uh, some, show you some of the things that happened, but uh, yeah, this has been an absolutely incredible experience and I want to share some of it with you now on the vlog. So, uh, yeah, enjoy! <laughs> Testing, one, two, okay, we're here for rehearsal. General Kruber, it's nine o'clock in the morning. What's up and welcome to the James Dawson vlog. Here, subscribe below, like and Is comment. This for YouTube? You should listen to this man. Okay, yeah, I actually like and comment. <laughs> right. We have orchestra. <laughs> Choir sitting around, tech going on, stage being set up, we've got the scenery. If you don't know The Beggar's Opera, it was written in 1728 and is a parody of the elaborate and elite Italian operas which were very popular in London and around Europe at the time. The starting point of my reworking of The Beggar's Opera was an almost postmodern device which John Gay uses. At the start of The Beggar's Opera, the beggar appears on stage, who turns out to be the author of the opera we're about to watch, and is basically a jobbing writer who gets by from writing commissions for different clients, hence the name beggar, because he's always begging for work and he's joined on stage by the player, one of the actors from the play. Now towards the end of the opera, when everything is going wrong for the anti-hero Macheath, the beggar and the player reappear, and the player persuades the beggar to change the impending tragic ending to a happy ending, because the player points out operas always have happy endings. I really like this idea of seeing the author of the opera on stage, and in my version I expanded the beggar and the player into two much more substantial characters, Spivy and Trout. I'm Sebastian and I participated in James's uh, opera and I was a character of Spivy. So Spivy is a character from South, South London. He's a wheeler dealer. He composes music for a living um, with his sidekick Trout. Um, he's not the most intellectual of all sorts, uh, that he's in, like using common sense and also he doesn't even though it appears that, and he thinks that he knows a lot about music, I'm not sure he really does. Um, and he makes fun of Trout saying he's actually not very intellectual when, <laughs> I, I'd actually say Trout is more intellectual. Trout is his sidekick and he helps him throughout the play um, composing uh, The Twilight of the Beggar's Opera. But um, he actually doesn't really compose it himself. He uses bits and bobs from different 
um, composers from the past, he models it all up, he changes it how he wants to. It's like a mix and match of different um, pieces of music and different plays. So in my piece, we follow Spivy and Trout writing their opera based on The Beggar's Opera, and aided by John Gay himself, who has ended up in the back of Spivy's van through the chance appearance of a very convenient time portal. In between their scenes, we also see Spivy and Trout's opera itself play out on stage as an opera within an opera. In The Beggar's Opera, McHeath is a highwayman who claims to be brave and honourable, but seems to spend most of his time drinking and hanging out with various women. In my version, McHeath is transformed into MC Heath. The number's called 07905 My role in the opera was MC Heath. He was a wannabe chav. He's a rich uh, boy from Richmond uh, that lives in Richmond with his parents. So he's got lots of money, but he wants to be, you know, a chav and a hacker. And he's got his hacker collective. I'll go and stay at my mum's for a while until this blows over. Keep a t keep a low profile. No worries, bro. Hang on. Don't you ever get your mum's anyway? Hang on. Gut, danke dafür. Kann ich kurz mal... So I was Lucy. Um, she is the daughter of Lockett, who is the prison guard. And she's really in love with this MC Heath, uh, this hacker. And the problem is um, MC Heath also has a relationship with Polly, another girl. Um, and I don't know that, and as soon as I hear of him having a relationship with another girl, we two really are mad at each other and try to make MC Hivars and um, we plot against each other, and it's very interesting. I'm going to teach you a lesson. I can have you for breakfast, girl. Now I'm just in the middle of writing the fight between them two bards, yeah? And you'll never guess what happened next. 